Dolph Delph is a man who started out doing things pretty much like everyone else. He went to school, got an education, got a good job, and it looked like he was well on his way to living happily ever after. It was pretty much the standard plan for most Americans, especially those Americans who came of age in the 50s and 60s like Ralph. But along the way, he came to a fork in the road, like many of us do. But unlike many of us, he really did take that path less traveled, and it truly has made all the difference. That path was a narrow two-lane road that hopscotched its way from Miami, Florida for 160 miles to the southernmost point of the United States of America, Key West. It was here, surrounded by the crystal blue waters of the Caribbean, that Ralph left his ordinary life behind and became one of the pioneers of the light-tackled saltwater fishing industry. Uh, I watched Key West at a time. I came to Key West back in the early 60s uh, fishing, and this is a time when hand lines were prevalent. Uh, rods, spinning rods and reels almost did not exist. Uh, they, we came down with our first spinning outfits, and people didn't even know what they were, I don't think. They laughed at us for taking the light tackle out. and. I came down and stuck it out and uh, started fishing down here and I didn't want to be any any place else. And uh, as time went on, I um, married my wife and we had the boys and I uh, wanted to raise them in a, a versatile atmosphere and uh, so we went out west and uh, bought a place out there and the boys grew up half a year in Montana and half a year here in Key West and uh, between hunting and fishing, that's all we've known all of our life. Living one's life according to the seasons instead of the clock created some problems for Ralph and his young family. Uh, I had a tendency to get in trouble with my wife for taking them out of school and you know, sk skipping school when they would make good grades and take them fishing or hunting. And um, I've, I've never known a person that uh, later on in life said, gee, I wish I'd spent less time with my kids. And I've spent a lot of time with my kids, and I'm still spending time with them. And uh, it's just, when it's all over and done with, it's I wish I had spent more with them. Mike, Rob, and Bill are each accomplished captains and guides who, like their father, enjoy the daily challenges and rewards of running their own charters. Just fishing in general, I mean, that's everybody's dream, is to get off work and go fishing, and now I get to uh, get paid to take people fishing or go fishing. And people ask me, what do you do when you're not fishing? And uh, I tell them I go fishing, fishing or hunting. I don't know what other careers I would have chosen. You know, I love to fish, and I would have been fishing all my life regardless if it was my career or, or not. But I think the, the thing that makes it most enjoyable for me is the, the ability to do this with my family and my brothers, and we get to go out and spend time with each other. It really gives you just a feeling that I don't want to ever, you know, I know this is the only thing I want to do for the rest of my life now. It truly is a fishing family steeped in a lifestyle that began a hundred years ago with Henry Flagler's railroad and the men who traveled down its rails to fish the teeming waters of the Caribbean and the deep blue current of the Gulf Stream. It's a family that has educated thousands in the art of light tackle saltwater fishing in both seminars and conventions throughout the country. They've competed in and won more than their share of offshore and inshore fishing tournaments. I've fished in most of the uh, tarpon tournaments in the Upper Keys for many years. I've fished a lot of the sailfish tournaments down here in uh, the south end of the Keys, as well as the upper end of the Keys. Done quite well over the years. I've been very competitive by nature, so I think it was just a, a normal uh, evolution for the boys to get into it like they have. They've done quite well in the uh, SKA. They have the three largest fish ever taken in SKA, it's, uh, they've, and to this day still uh, have the largest one I know. Um, the competitive nature that we have, I think, probably precipitates from the old man. <laughs> Tournament fishing has been a trip. I mean, everything we have done 
I feel like we just get out of it the skin of our teeth every time. And we, I don't know how we keep winning these tournaments that we're winning. Every time I said, Rob, if we could just, if we could just win one more, can you imagine how neat that would be if we could just keep winning one more? And every time we do it, I'm just like, I can't believe we.